My third section is actually about the spiritual power of, of the, the fruit of our labor, really, in Ramadan. And this is probably my favorite section. The next section is rather controversial. And it's also PG-17. So for those of you in the audience, if you have children, that last section, the, the fourth section, kick them out of the room. Because we have other things. It's Quran, we'll have to talk about it, but it's not appropriate for children younger than 16 at least, inshallah. But anyway, this section is fine. When we recite the Quran, who's speaking? Allah is speaking. But when you want to have a conversation, you have to have two parties speak. A conversation is one in which one party speaks and the other party speaks, yeah? This ayah, the, one, the next ayah we're about to read is the ayah of dua. And this is one of the most beautiful ayat in the entire Quran about the concept of talking to Allah, calling upon Allah, speaking with Allah. Notice the sequence. First you recite what, where, where Allah speaks to you. Ramadan is about refreshing how Allah speaks to you. But a conversation is not complete until you speak, speak to Allah. So now this is going to complete the conversation. And this is actually something so beautifully consistent in the Qur'an. This exact order is found multiple times in the Qur'an, beginning with the Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, Allah speaks. Our turn. Iyaka na'budu, wa iyaka nasta'een, ihdina salatu. That's when we speak. You see that? The same thing's gonna happen here. Now it's time for us to speak with Allah. We're learning in these ayat, Ramadan is the best time to make dua. But you have to have the proper etiquette. You let Allah speak first. And you listen carefully first. And then you ask. Has it ever happened that you were going to go walk in and ask for something from your parents? And your mother said, wait, let me tell you something first. And she speaks to you for five minutes. And then what you were going to ask completely changed. And you decided not to even ask. <laughs> or you started wondering whether, what should I ask for now? <laughs> Has that happened? Yes. And you know, when you go to someone that you're going to ask, and they say, I want to talk to you first, it is totally disrespectful and disregarding of their status that you say, no, 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 I just want to ask you first. I don't want to hear anything from you first. You want to ask Allah, I want to ask Allah, we want to ask Him all the time. Can you hear Him out first? Can you just hear what he has to say first before you ask? Maybe what he has to say is better than what you were going to ask. And even if it's not you in your mind not better, which it is, doesn't he deserve that he should be heard first before you're heard? The order, the, the principle of dua, let Allah speak to you and then you're in a position to speak to Allah. So powerful. People are really into dua. People are really wanting to get Allah to hear them. But they're not into hearing Allah themselves. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my slaves ask you about me, then I am near. This is a beautiful ayah. I'm going to go piece by piece in this ayah. Alright, yeah, because I, I want to do justice to this as much as I can. Uh, I'll start with an analogy, folks. Uh, I've talked about this before, but it doesn't matter. A mother sends her son off in the military. He's been shipped somewhere. He's going to come back in a few months. She says, when my son comes back, I'm going to make his favorite cake. Or does she say, if my son comes back, I'll make his favorite cake. When? When? She's definitely not going to say if. You don't say if when you have that much love and that much hope. She's actually not willing to accept the possibility that he might be killed. She will always say what? When. Her intense love keeps her from saying what word? If. Listen to the words. إِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي When my slaves ask you about me. They haven't even asked yet. But Allah, in His intense love for all of His slaves, refuses to give up on them or even entertain the possibility that they won't be asking. There are people who haven't asked about Allah for a long time. And even on those, so long as they have breath in their lungs, Allah has not given hope up on them. We give up hope in Allah. Allah doesn't give up hope in us. إِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي Notice the word سَأَلَ is مَاضِي If it was إِذَا يَسْأَلُكَ It would have been مُسْتَمِر Which means it would have been They keep asking you about me But even if they were to ask you once Allah is talking about a kind of person Or the kinds of people Who ask about Allah But once in a lifetime 
something happened in their life and they decided to walk into a masjid in Ramadan and ask about Allah. You know? And when they ask, Allah didn't say what they ask. They ask about me. A drunk guy walks into the masjid. Why is God doing this to me? Does that ha It's happened. I've seen it actually happen before. You know? Somebody walks and asks about Allah when a family member dies, when a business fails, when they get diagnosed with a terminal disease, when they get impaired. They come and ask about Allah. Allah didn't restrict the question. People can ask good things about Allah. People can ask bad things about Allah. But they're coming and asking, in this case, to the Prophet And it's so beautiful that to the first answer to all of the questions, I mean, different, ans different questions should have different answers. But it doesn't matter what you asked about Allah. The one thing that will probably answer all of your questions is, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ I am definitely near. I am de uh, without a doubt, I am close. Allah's closeness became the primary response to anyone who asks about Him. His closeness. SubhanAllah, it's so beautiful. You know, uh, at this occasion, it should be shared with you that through the Qur'an, we become closer to Allah. I'll say that again. Through the Qur'an, we become closer to Allah. And through dua, Allah becomes closer to us. It's, there's both parties are coming closer to each other. Okay? When we're reciting the Qur'an, Allah is speaking to us. When someone's speaking to you, you draw your attention towards them. Whoever is speaking, you, you're drawn towards them. When Allah is speaking in the Qur'an, we're drawn towards Him. When we're making dua, Allah is drawn towards us. SubhanAllah. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ Then I'm near. There's another thing here. There's always another thing. The Prophet ﷺ is asked, إِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي When my slaves ask you. He didn't just say, when they ask. When they ask, you. And who's that you referring to primarily? Rasulullah And by extension, any Rasul of the Rasul of Allah. Anyone who learns and teaches the message of Allah's Messenger. So some people will go to them. People will go to an Imam. People will go to a student of deen. And go ask them about Allah. Yeah. But first understand, it goes back to the Prophet primarily. وسلم, and the rest of us as representatives of his message. In whatever capacity. Now understand that. When you ask the Prophet وسلم, about Allah, Allah is so happy that you consulted his messenger that as a result he becomes near. I'll say that again. The fact that you considered consulting his messenger brought him near. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now practically what does that mean for you and me? The Prophet ﷺ told us what to ask Allah when you walk into your home, when you walk out of your home. He told you what to ask Allah when you're going to eat and when you're going to finish eating, when you're going to when you wear your clothes, when you're going to ride your car, when you're going to get married, when you're going to see your wife for the first time, when you're going to have a child, when you're going to have a aqiqah, when you're going to have a jana. There's not an occasion in life where he didn't tell you what to ask Allah. He told you all the things you can ask Allah for in your entire life. If you don't know all those du'as, there's such a thing as ticket notes. Get them. Put them on your fridge. Put them on the banana. Put them in your dashboard. Put them everywhere. Ask. Because, why am I telling you that? Because if you want to guarantee Allah's closeness to you, then you uh, go through the Prophet And there's the most beautiful part of all of this. This phrase. And that is that, who did they ask? They asked the Prophet. If they asked him, he should give the answer. He should give the answer, sallallahu So the ayah would go, إِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَقُلْ لَهُمْ إِنِّي قَرِيبٌ If they ask you, tell them I am near. Allah removed the phrase, tell them. It is as though they came and asked you about me. He removed the Prophet from the equation. I'll talk to you myself. Allah is so happy that you even asked about him. He's not ready to talk to, to his messenger about you. He's immediately ready to talk to you. And actually, you, weren't, you were so scared, you weren't even going to talk to him. You'd rather talk to the Prophet because you're too embarrassed to talk to Allah. But Allah broke the ice and came talk to you directly and said, I'm close, you can talk to me directly. فَإِنِّي And then he says, أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي I immediately respond and wholly respond to the single call da'wata with the tamar buta that's called the mastar marra the single call of the one who called 
I, this phrase is so powerful. By the way, by using the word da'wata, Allah is saying this is not even a person who makes thousands of du'as. There's someone who's so far gone, they only made this one du'a, this one time. Da'wata. Why is this person's du'a so special? Some people come to me and say, brother, ask my, make du'a for my children. And you know, make du'a for my mother, because you know, you're so much closer to Allah. Where am I closer to Allah? Am I like on a higher floor? I'm closer to Allah. What do you mean? I'm closer to Allah. I don't understand. Well, Allah's not going to listen to my du'a. I'm a bad person. Really? Let me tell you what qualifications you must have for your du'a to be answered immediately. If somebody asks, what do I do for my du'a to get answered immediately? All you have to be is, here's the word, adda, the one who calls. You just have to be someone who calls. That's, Allah didn't say you have to be mukhlis or muttaqi or you have to be righteous or a hafiz or a haji or a alim or... All you have to do is be someone who asks. That's it. The guy who called, that very one time he called is good enough for Allah. And he will respond to that one when? Ujibu. This is actually mubasharatan. Immediately. Immediately. I want you to understand how human beings work differently and walillahi al-mathal wal-a'la. I have different students. I have different relationships, family members. There's a family member who always cares about me, asks about me, deals with me all the time. When they ask me something, I'm ready to do it for them immediately because I have a constant relationship with them. Then there's a person who clearly doesn't care about me, doesn't concern themselves with me, has dismissed me on many occasions. They've seen, looked straight at me and not even said salam. And now they call me. Am I inclined to call them back right away? Am I not allowed to say, where were you all these years? Now you want me to call you right back right away? I'll take my time. I called them so many times they didn't listen. Why should I call them back immediately? Isn't that our attitude? Allah doesn't have a right to say, where were you the last 18 years? You want me to answer your dua right away? Where were you last Ramadan? This Ramadan you wake up? He doesn't have the right to do that. But he says, Ujibu da'wat ad I'll call whoever calls. The one who calls. Then the power of this subhanAllah, like, even in the small audience, there are thousands of people online, but even in the small audience that's in front of me, if each of you took five minutes of my time, and there's 20 of you, there'll be a hundred minutes. That's a long time. And even then you'll say, I only got five minutes. <laughs> and I, I guarantee you, I won't remember all your names. There's no way. If you have an employer that's got a thousand employees, he's not gonna know all the names. He's not. And even if all the employees send the CEO an email, he's not gonna respond. He's gonna have a secretary and the secretary's secretaries respond. Because he can't handle all that load. Allah Azza wa doesn't say, I'll respond to the call of some caller. He said, Adda. He knows each one of them particularly. They're special to him. They're special to him. They're not an unknown to him. You know? No one is higher than Allah. And no one's lower than you and me. And yet Allah acknowledges each one of us and our requests immediately. And then he says, Ida da'an. That, that part just blows me away. Ida da'an. Whenever they call. Whenever he calls me. The more important someone is, the harder it is to get their time. Can I have an appointment with you? Yeah, next month. For how long? Five minutes. Okay, I'll give you six. You know? Oh, I'd, I'd like to talk to the president. Uh, good luck with that. I had to take my child to a specialist one time. It was booked for six months. Getting him on the phone took two weeks. The appointment came for six months later. And if you're 15 minutes late to the appointment, good luck, another year. You better show up on their time. They don't operate on your time. You operate on their time. The more important someone is, the more you have to be on their schedule. And Allah turns to you and me, and the one who hasn't even asked Allah ever, has ignored him his entire existence, and says, I'm going to answer you immediately, whenever you call. People ask, what's the best time to make dua? Allah says, whenever you call. Ida da'an. And then he says, okay, I'm going to do this for you. What do you have to do for me? فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ Then they should try to respond to me too. It's so beautiful that he didn't say فَلْيُجِيبُ Then they should respond to me immediately as well. Ijaba would have been immediate. Istijaba To try to respond. To progressively respond. To put an effort in responding. To want to respond. Istifal also has talab in it. Desire in it. To, do they even want to respond to me? Do I even see a want in them? Some effort in them? You know, this is the unique thing about Allah. Nobody else can appreciate effort. Everybody else can only appreciate results. Only Allah can appreciate effort. You know the kid who comes last in the race, we say, thanks for trying. Nobody's, we're just saying that so he doesn't cry. 
<laughs> we're, we're not really. It's the effort that matters. Yeah, but <laughs> if it's the effort that mattered, why does he get a medal? Uh, why didn't I get a, you know, why I got a participation award? You know, you, if you failed your exam, you're, nobody else is going to care that it's the, at least you made the effort. You know, if you're from Pakistan, I'll show you effort. If you failed. <laughs> <laughs> Try making that case, you know. But with Allah Azza wa Jal, somebody hasn't become perfect yet. Somebody's trying. They're trying to wake up for Fajr. They're trying to leave sin behind. They're trying to move into a you know, halal lifestyle. Nobody else sees change in them, but Allah sees what? Them trying. So don't say, well, if, since I don't see results, it's not even worth trying. Don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Because Allah is not interested in results. Allah is interested in seeing how much you want and how much you try. And nobody knows that except Allah. You can't even lie to yourself about that. I tried. You know when you didn't try. You know what? That's what we do now. A new lie to ourselves is when you don't do something, I tried. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You can lie to yourself. You can't lie to Him. And they should believe in me. They shouldn't lose faith in me. I'll still be here. I'll still answer them. Don't give up. People will give up on you. But I won't. You know, people won't believe in you. I'll believe in you and you believe in me. Well, you mean be la'allahum yashudun, so they may be set straight. Now, subhanAllah, as I conclude this, the conversation between you and Allah is complete. The, Allah's part of the conversation was Quran. Your part of the conversation is what? Dua. Is dua. And when that conversation is complete, Allah says, hopefully you'll be set straight. This is the way to set our lives straight between the word of Allah and the prayers to Allah. That'll set our lives straight. May Allah make us of those who find that straightness in our lives in this, in this month. And by the way, Rashad in Arabic from Yarshudun, Rashad is when a, a course, like it goes straight and it deviates. Like you didn't realize that you went off course. And when you come back, this is Sabila Rashad. Like you want a path, you found a way back to get back on the straight road. That's actually called Rashad. So the, the, to avoid the deviation off course is actually Rashad. And figuratively, it's used for reform.